So my question for you is, what are your plans or do you have plans to support that subgroup of immigrants who have been here their whole lives, or most of them, and have to live and die in the shadows? I'm so sorry for you. Thank you. You must remember your mother as she lived. Mm -hmm. I, have enough, I have enough of a feeling about your strength that it probably comes from her to know. She would want you to remember her as she lived and not as she died, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's take it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Your parents were here for years, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. And your father was able to earn his pathway to citizenship, but your mother was not. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to assume it's because part of the problem is that we do have a broken immigration system, mm -hmm. including it being the case that even though when we were elected in 2020, and the first bill we offered Congress, before we did the bipartisan infrastructure bill, before we did the work on gun safety, before we did the work on investing in chips and science, the first bill we offered within hours of taking the oath was a bill to fix the immigration system, including creating a comprehensive, earned pathway to citizenship for hardworking people. And it was not taken up. And now we look at a situation where people are suffering. The reality is that in terms of having access to health care, had your mother been able to gain citizenship, she would have been entitled to health care that may have alleviated her suffering and yours. And this is one example of the fact that there are real people who are suffering because of an inability to put solutions in front of politics. I mean, an example of this on immigration policy is that as it relates to what we need to do to strengthen our border. A bipartisan group of members of Congress, including one of the most conservative members of the United States Senate, came together with one of the strongest border security bills we've had in decades. And it included 1,500 more border agents to go to the border to help those hardworking folks who are working around the clock. The border agents supported the bill. It included more resources to stem the flow of fentanyl, which is killing people of every background in every region of our country. It would have allowed us to have more resources to take on transnational criminal organizations. I have prosecuted transnational criminal organizations, from the Guadalajara cartel to the Sinaloa cartel. And Donald Trump found out about that bill, realized it would be a solution, and told them not to put it on the floor for a vote because he would prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And again, Enrique, we were talking about it. In terms of real leadership, real leadership is about solving problems on behalf of the people. And I'm so sorry for what you've been through. I'm so sorry for what you've been through. And, um, you know, my mother came to the United States at the age of 19. She was by herself. Came alone by herself. She raised my sister and me, Maya. And um, I know what it is like to have a hardworking mother who loves you and to lose that. But I know that her spirit is alive. I know her spirit is alive. And will you tell me her name and let's speak her name? Maria Dolores, sorry, <clears throat> Maria Dolores Figueroa. Maria Dolores? Mm -hmm. Okay, we speak her name, okay? Yes. 